Oh, say can you please not butcher the nation's anthem? Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be counting down another top 10 national anthem fails. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're looking at instances where singers messed up performing either the US National Anthem, the Star Spangled Banner, or Canada's National Anthem, O Canada. If you don't see the particular egregious performance that's etched in your memory, check out our original list. Number 10. Josh Groban and Flea Sometimes polar opposites come together to make something new and incredible. Other times you get, well, whatever this was. Whose broad stripes and bright star. For the 2010 BCS National Championship game, Josh Groban and Flea of the Red Hot Chili Peppers got together to perform the national anthem. And the rock and red it was a strange pairing to say the least, with Josh staying committed to his operatic style of singing and Flea accompanying him on bass. The version was slow and seemed stilted, despite a drummer kicking in to liven it up. And while it wasn't the worst rendition we've ever heard, it definitely left us with more questions than answers. Namely, why? Number 9. Cat de Luna Performing the anthem at a major game can be a great way for an aspiring pop star to broaden their fan base. At least, that's the best case scenario if they kill it. Oh, say, can you see? Unfortunately for Cat de Luna, she got her big chance to perform at a Monday Night Football game back in 2008 and most likely lost fans rather than gained new ones. She gave a very divified performance of the song, complete with vocal runs and matching finger wagging. DeLuna had the confidence of Aretha Franklin, but did not exactly have the vocals to back it up. The crowd wasn't kind and ended up booing her by the song's end. Number 8. Misha Brueger Gossman Sometimes you have to wonder who's booking the talent for these performances. It's not too often that we hear an operatic version of the Star Spangled Banner or O Canada at a sporting event, and that's for good reason. At a 2012 Senators vs Penguins game, opera singer Misha Brueger Gossman gave one of the most dramatic renditions of both songs when she belted them out in her full, over-the-top style. It was clear that she was a classically trained singer, but you have to know your audience. Overly drawn out, she made it feel less like the start of a sporting event, more like a brand of cruel and unusual punishment. Number 7. Madison Rising This band was doomed from the start. Before Madison Rising even began to play, the announcer at a 2014 NASCAR race introduced them as America's most patriotic rock band, a big claim for anyone to make. What started off a slow but fairly run-of-the-mill rendition took on a new life when the bass kicked in and they attempted to turn the national anthem into a rollicking rock and roll song. Not that this hasn't been done successfully before, Jimi Hendrix anyone? But this particular version was a resounding flop. Too aggressive and just tonally off, the performance was an example that sometimes it's best to stay in your lane. Number 6. Steven Tyler Steven Tyler may be a rock legend, but even legends have their off days. Performing the national anthem at the Indy 500, Steven started off nicely by doing a little harmonica riff before he started singing. Oh, say can you see? But as soon as he opened his mouth, it went downhill pretty quickly. It was a bit too rock and roll, and he sounded more like he was screaming rather than singing for much of the performance. Toward the end, he slid into a particularly egregious note that sounded like he was fighting off an assailant, not singing the nation's most important song. We feel bad for all the ears in the stadium that day. Number 5. Clint Bowers there must be something truly intoxicating to a performer about just going for it when they sing the Star Spangled Banner. 
Perhaps it's some mixture of the crowd around them with the swell of patriotism that makes singers push their limits to sometimes disastrous results. That has to explain actor Clint Bowers, who had one of the most cringe-inducing final notes in his performance of the anthem at an NBA game. Poor dude really thought he was going to hit the high note, but instead his voice cracked and warbled all over the place. But we guess kudos to him for really committing. Number 4. Aaron Lewis Your eyes and ears will be forever stained by this rendition of America's Anthem. Aaron Lewis, the lead singer of the aforementioned alternative metal band and now a country music crooner, went lyrically rogue at Game 5 of the 2014 World Series. Well, so proudly we You'd think such a self-consciously uber-patriot would, like, have remembered the words to the most iconic song in the country's repertoire. But no, he done goofed, replacing At the Twilight's Last Gleaming with a wrongfully placed We're So Gallantly Streaming. Maybe he should have had the lyrics tattooed on his neck. Number 3. Jesse McCartney When you're a professional singer, one of the lowest bars to clear is knowing the words to the song you're performing. But time and time again, we've seen performers let that get the best of them. By the dawn's early light, whose broad stripes and bright stars. That's exactly what happened with singer and actor Jesse McCartney, who completely skipped a line while singing the national anthem at the 2009 NASCAR Pepsi 500. From the get-go, he seemed nervous and timid, unlike his usual stage presence. We don't know what was going on with him, but it had to be bad to completely flub it like that. Oh, the lands of the free. Number 2. Dennis Casey Parks Confidence can go a long way in selling a performance, and if Dennis Casey Parks brought nothing else to his rendition of O Canada, it was that. With growing hearts we see the rise. In 1994, the Canadian Football League tried to expand the league with new American based teams like the Las Vegas Posse. God keep our land glorious and free. For a game against Saskatchewan, Parks, a lounge singer, was chosen to sing the opening anthems, but too bad he never listened to the Canadian song beforehand. He made it sound like the Christmas carol, O Tannenbaum, which stunned Canadians in the crowd. Parks became a laughingstock, but two weeks later, he redeemed himself by singing it correctly at another game. Number 1. Fergie It's not that Fergie is a bad singer, or even that she didn't hit most of her notes. It's more like, what the heck was she thinking? What's so proudly we At the 2018 NBA All-Star Game, for whatever reason, she decided to perform the song with a jazzy arrangement, complete with scatting. Instead of mixing it up and creating a new classic, the result was a weird, sexual rendition of the song that had players and spectators straining to keep from laughing. And the home. Her version was breathy and seductive, the polar opposite feelings the national anthem should inspire. She got roasted on social media and apologized that her performance didn't, quote, strike the intended tone. The reason I was smiling <laughs> is because I love the national anthem so much. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Watch Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.